Hello, I hope you're having a great day. So, yesterday I got all of these rows weeded. I also weeded the farm. Yes, that is done for another two weeks. So I only do that about every two weeks because it is about a two hour task. By the time I go around everything, I didn't do everything I normally do, but not everything's crazy yet. So got them knocked down. There's a few areas I need to just mow with my little mower, but my dad pretty much got all the rest. And I'm sure there's more areas I could weedy, but I got the majority of it. I didn't do along my field because there's some penny crust growing and I love to use that as filler. It's so pretty. It's got, so what penny crust is, is in Iowa, um, the farmers will use it in the fields to keep them from eroding away and then they just till it back in, you know, when they get ready to plant. But it makes an awesome filler. It has like little heart shaped seed pods. So it's like the heart is covering the little seed and they last forever in a vase and they're just really whimsical and pretty. So I love to use them. It's something that helps our farmers out. It's something that is edible. So I absolutely love it. And you can't go wrong when you find a plant like that. So um, I'm gonna cut the end of that row instead of weed eating it because I think I have about a bucket of penny crust down there. So anyway, it's looking a little bit better. Hopefully that tames it for a little bit. When it gets really, really hot in the summer, they don't tend to grow as bad or as crazy. Um, right early in the spring things are just nuts so if I can kind of keep on it a little bit then even if I let it go this summer it won't be as bad next spring and it knocks down like like in this fence if I knock it all down trees aren't gonna grow in it the marrow honeysuckle is not gonna grow in it so I really try to get after it just to not have because I have to get my saw out for those things and there are a few things I saw around that I really do need to get my saw out and get them cut down um, just to get them away from the trees and different stuff. I noticed I need to put on some good gloves and I need to cut some vines off the trees. I went around the last two years and I've been trying to cut all the vines off the trees and then if I keep around them weed eated, the vines, you know, don't grow up them. But there are some that are just too close to the trunk and I don't want to nick the tree. So I'll just take my clippers after I get gloves on because some of it is poison ivy and I'll just clip it off right at the base and I just kind of let it hang there. I don't try to touch it or anything, but at least then it doesn't grow bigger and it doesn't keep going up the tree and because it really, those vines really do kill the trees um, when they get big and they just kind of take over. And I think underneath the root system gets really big and like sucks a lot of water out and it just really restricts the tree. So I like to try to get those off of as many as I can. Obviously we have like a whole timber of trees so I can't do it, but around here I try to do it. Um, and just to keep it kind of nice. Some of the, you can see it on a lot of the trees, but what are you gonna do? I can't rip it all off cause it'll fly in my face and I'll probably get poison ivy. But for the most part, I do try to knock that kind of stuff off to save the trees. They're big, beautiful things. So anyway, I almost feel like I need a break, but it's only 10.38. <laughs> that is a messy job. Anyway, I'm going to go regroup and see what I have to do next. Okay, so it was supposed to be a really nice cloudy day, but it is so bright and it feels really hot and sunny. And it's about 2 in the afternoon. And I don't think any plants that come right out of my little cold frame and go into the field would fare too well with this bright sun on them. So I've decided I'm just gonna go ahead and weed these rows and get ready and I'll put them in when it's cooler and cloudier. So I'm just gonna take a before picture. <laughs> and then I'll take an after. So 
I've got all these rows ready to plant and tomorrow is supposed to be cloudy so I should be able to just pop stuff in and now today I'm going to try to get some plants in. So, so at the bottom of this row I'm going to have status this year and then frosted explosion grass right next to the fence. I hope that's not a mistake. I do know that grass took off quite a bit. Um, but we'll just see. Maybe I'll have to leave like a row <laughs> not planted. And then I have some more snapdragons I can put in. And I also have a bunch of zinnia seeds. At the end here I have asters, which my asters didn't have great germination. So they don't have a lot of plants. So I might get some seeds and stick in the ground and just see how they do. And then I'll put the rest of the plants in. And then it's going to be zinnias all the way up to the blue sea holly. And the sun kind of comes like it goes like this this way over the garden so i think that's gonna give the snapdragons plenty of sun and then it's just gonna shade them a little bit from the hottest afternoon sun so i still think they'll do okay um they did okay last year with sunflowers and zinnias and they did have the jewels of opar so i guess they were getting a little bit more sun if anything goes wrong and for some reason they're not doing as well and my zinnias up in that field are doing really well I could always just take out the zinnias like as well or make sure I cut them down real short these are all just weird varieties so um, up there I'm doing all Benares giants so I have like every single color of Benares giant I could get my hands on and then down here I'm doing the Magna Mix, the Zinderella Mix, the Signora, the Dahlia Gold Flower Gold Metal Mix, um, the Oklahoma Mix, the Blue Point Mix, which same, they're just the Benaries, the Pinka, the Super Cactus, and the State Fair. So if those do well, and my snapdragons are doing fine with the zinnias. I think um, it'll be fun to have some of these different varieties and there won't be that many of them. There'll just be this row. And then at the end of the row will be the asters. So, so that's the plan right now. And I'm just gonna get to it and get as much stuff planted as I can today. I do have three bouquets to make later. My alliums are coming through. Um, I took a picture of the ones I harvested yesterday, and then I took a little bit of footage today of the ones I harvested today. So far, I've probably got 20 to 30 of them. I know that my florist wanted, he said he would buy all the alliums I had, but my problem is, is I need the alliums to fulfill subscriptions and orders right now. So I'm not gonna be able to make those available to sale because I do have to get the people that have already bought things um, their flowers and then I'll be able to make them available for sale. Last year I put my alliums in the cooler and the cooler was extremely cold. I think it even froze one night and those allium were good like for weeks until I was done with them and they had a tremendous vase life. I just cut them when I start so you can if you really look at the ball and maybe I'll try to get some footage later when I'm inside um, you look at it and there's all these like you can tell all the little blooms are coming up and when about a third of those blooms are open that's when I harvest it and I had really good luck with them opening up all the way I might do some testing this year and see if you can harvest it a little bit earlier but that method really worked and they stored really well and they lasted a long time in the vases so I was really happy they kept opening up and they got to the point where they were so spread out they almost weren't a ball anymore um, and it was just really pretty so and there's a lot of different kinds of alliums down there so the alliums that are blooming right now are the gladiator alliums that I planted and they are the earliest blooming allium so I should have a whole array of alliums kind of staggered out which means they should just keep lasting me um, for a few weeks here so that's awesome but right now I'm gonna get to it um, I'm not gonna do the zinnias quite yet I'm gonna go ahead and put the snapdragons I have in and then the status and then I do have a tray of gomprina out here but that goes in that other field so I'm just gonna get to it Okay, 
that was a little on the muddy side of things. So I think I'm gonna count down my zinnias and put them in because I think the seeds will go really easy into the mud. Okay, so I'm just gonna do five feet of each kind. And then in the middle of them, I see a bunch of jewels of opar that I think just receded themselves are coming up. And I have some trays of jewels of opar, but they weren't the best germination. So I skipped the section and then I started the zinnias again. So I'm just gonna get to it and get them in the ground. Okay, so at the top is blue sea holly and then all the way down is zinnias and then there's a little patch where I'm going to put the jewels of opar and then more zinnias and I'm going to put frosted explosion grass. I'm going to go ahead and work my way up to the zinnias and then whatever is left I'll just fill with that last zinnia that I had which was the Benares giant. So. That's what I'm gonna do now. I'm just gonna get this frosted explosion grass in the ground. All right, frosted explosion grass is in and now I'm gonna do a tray of status right next to it over here. I got that done. It took a little bit longer than normal because there were a lot of duplicate, like there were a lot where I overseeded the cell and I tried to pull them apart and put them in their own. They're pretty little, so we'll see if they make it or not. They might not, um, but I thought it was worth a shot to try to stick them in the ground. So frosted explosion grass, zinnias, jewels of opar, blue sea holly, and now I started this row with status. Now I need to probably clean up. I'm a mess, oh my gosh, I'm a mess, and I need to deliver bouquets and make the bouquets. So I'm gonna get cleaned up and then get that done, and then hopefully after that I can get more plants in the ground. I made the bouquets, I delivered them, and I got back out here. Sorry I didn't make a video on making the bouquets this time, but I was trying to get them in town before noon. Um, and by the time I got out of the field and started getting stuff around, I was like, oh no, I don't have time to video these. So I went ahead and I made the three arrangements. I took them in, I delivered them, and now it's super windy. So I hope you can hear me, but I'm back out here and I'm gonna put Gomfrina in the ground. So I got my gomfrina in, sorry for the wind noise. And then right here in this little area, this was all weeds before. And so I did gomfrina at probably a little less than six inch spacing, but this is all foot spacing and gomfrina is supposed to be in six inch spacing. Um, but honestly last year it like took over. So I'm gonna try it this year and see what it does because the six inch spacing fabric I don't even know why you use fabric it just doesn't block that many weeds and I feel like you spend more time weeding in it than it helps I think you could go alongside the rows with like a hoe or something probably just as fast now when you get up to the nine inch in the foot it definitely helps um, but like my Lysianthus, like is a weedy mess again, so I'll probably have to weed them. Um, and that always happens in the six inch spacing. I do it anyway, but I thought I'd put a few out here in, this is always just a big weed mess. So I was like, well, maybe Gomfrina will grow and smother out the weeds. <laughs> I can always hope, right? 
So anyway, that task is done. I need to go revisit my map. I did end up having this much gomferina left, which isn't much. Um, maybe 36 plants. So I'm just going to put them back in the greenhouse and water them. If I find somewhere else to put them, I will. I think I have plenty. Um, if something happens and these die, I could always pluck a few in. This is probably all I'd really need for the whole season. So I don't know why I did so many, but my germination wasn't great. And I think it'll give me what I needed. So I guess it worked out. I'll just figure out something to do with the last few plants. Um, I can maybe gift them or sell them at the farmer's market or find a place around the farm to put them. Um, there are some extra areas like that are like tilled that don't have the landscape fabric on them. I could pluck them in there. Like there's some options. So here's my little map. And as you can see, this is all of my perennial field up here. So everything's about came back in this year. And then I've highlighted everything that I've gotten. So I still have my amaranth. I still need to put my gladiolas in, my snow on the mountain, asters, crispedia, dusty miller, celosia, sunflowers. I did start them over here, but I'll just be doing successions. So it'll be a while before those all fill in. Um, and then Julza opar, ageratum. And then over here, I've already done my roses, my zinnias, and these are all just for successions. So I'm getting there. I still have a lot to put in the ground. I have a place on here for hookah, but I tried that in the fabric last year and it didn't work. So this year, I think I'm going to find a tree and try to put it around a tree in the shade or maybe along a building that we don't want to weed eat or something like that. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's coming along. I'm getting a lot in the ground. But anyway, I think I'm gonna call it a day. Um, that was a lot. I do have a bouquet to make tomorrow. Um, as soon as I get all my flowers in the ground, I can do a lot more bouquet making videos. I just want to get this stuff in the ground because I feel like the faster I get it in the ground, the faster it's gonna settle into its new home and start growing and producing. So that's why I haven't been doing any bouquets yet. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you all have a great day.